He's the pastor and founder of the Macedonia Miracle Kingdom and Worship Center in Montgomery, Alabama. He's also the presiding bishop of Prophetic Miracle Ministries worldwide. He's, got, he's a profound visionary and a prophet to the, to the nations. He travels extensively throughout the nations of the world. Please welcome Bishop Leo Lewis. Good Thank to you. see you, Bishop. My pleasure. Thank you. Oh, we're honored. We're honored you could be with us uh, tonight. Well, what an amazing broadcast tonight, huh? It's been extraordinary, yes. Um, I have just, I don't know, I've just been so moved and touched by the power of God working through this broadcast, and I know he's going to continue to do so. Uh, in our brief conversations, I've always, uh, I've been moved and touched by the insights God gives you. Have you always been this insightful? I mean, or did this evolve? Did you develop it? Talk to me about that gift, because it's a gift. Yes, it's, it's, it has evolved. It's, it's part of the process of, of evolving into godness. The Bible says um, in the book of Psalms that uh, this is Elohim, the big God. It says that God stands in the congregation of the mighty, the ecclesia, the church. Mm -hmm. And then there is a, a scrutinization of the Elohim, the big God, mm -hmm. as it pertains to the, the little gods. Mm. Because when dogs have dogs, they have little dogs. Yes. And when lions have lions, they have little lions. And when God gets pregnant, he has little gods. Mm. So he looks through the eye of God. He chastens, examines, he encourages. And he says, I have said that you are gods. But you will die as men. The context actually suggests that you will die as mere men because of a non-complicity uh, to the placement in the scheme of God's economy, you and I being God's governors in the earth. Mm. And when well, we now, you know, uh, in the scripture, the original Hebrew uh, of the Psalms that says uh, that who is man that thou art mindful of it? And we are made just a little lower than angels, King James says. But the original Hebrew, which they weren't willing to translate as it was written. Elohim. It says we are made just a little lower than God. Than God. Absolutely. God made us not only in his image, but in his <clears throat> likeness. In the richest sense of that. And Christ was asking us to take on that identity and do even greater things than he had done in the earth. So I, I, I say that just so the folk will fully understand that when you speak about little gods, we're talking about us. Absolutely. God is expecting us to be little gods with the small g. Yes. He wants us to be like him. Am I right about it? Absolutely. But, but to embrace the assignment from the big G. Mm hmm Yes. And all that the big G is, we are because of the authority that he gives us in the earth. Mm. And it is because of the failure to embrace the image, you know, as to who we are and what we are in the class of God as eternal spirits. I am just as old as Adam because God only got pregnant once. Mm. He didn't have multiple pregnancies. <laughs> we were all chosen in him at the self same time. Mm. Eternally, however, just released incrementally, you know, in time. When he created the plan, when he first 
thought of the plan of salvation. Well, when he first thought of creation, yes. he had to know instantly, oh, Holy Ghost, thank you. Mm -hmm. Had to know instantly what yeah. was going to happen. He had to know immediately that there had to be some kind of salvation for the fall of man. He had to know immediately that there would have to be a sacrifice, and Christ immediately submitted himself in God to be that sacrifice Precisely. before any of us was ever made. Absolutely. God does not have subsequent thoughts. He doesn't have subsequent thoughts. I love God that. God is eternal. He always lives constantly in the moment. So in the moment that he thought, the totality of thinking was in the moment of that one thought. Mm. No afterthought. One thought. <laughs> That's wonderful. That's good stuff, man. Yes. I haven't thought about it like that. But now, see, I'm, I'm stuck with an afterthought. <laughs> I'm so glad that I wasn't God's afterthought, but he thought of me right away. Absolutely. Oh! Yes. 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 Now, here again, what of those who do not embrace that truth, can they feel like or live their lives like an afterthought? There's nothing like the crisis that an absence or an incomplete or a voidness as to one's identity. Case in point, Lazarus was a son of Abraham, but because of the distortion of the, of the image as to who he was, because of the covenant of Abraham with Elohim, Lazarus, number one, the Bible says that he desired crumbs from a rich man's table. Mm. When you don't know who you are, you have crummy desires. Mm. Number two, mm. number two, the scripture says that, that he laid at the gate. Had he known who he was, he was as much of a son of Abraham as Isaac and Jacob. If he had known who he was, he could have gone behind the gate and owned everything beyond the gate. Because what Abraham did, what God did through Abraham, was to restore each of us back to Eden. Mm. And originally, in Eden, we were beyond the gate and owned everything within the parameters of the gate, the city called Eden, paradise. Mm -hmm. And so because of the image of who he was was distorted, he had sores. Sores are typically uh, an outward manifestation of an inward infection. Mm. It is an infectious thinking which, which, which manifested itself in the sores that came purportedly out of his flesh. And so because he didn't know who he was, the crisis, he only attracted compassion from a dimension of animals. Dogs licked him. Mm. Had he known who he was, if in fact he had gotten sores, then God would have licked away his sores. Mm. So the law you think, you know, the law, the dimension of compassion you can attract. Sometimes women wonder why these kind of men keep being attracted to me. You know, when you think like that, you attract only licking dogs. Woo! Wow. <laughs> so we're talking about a, a higher level of thought based on the highest identity we have. Yes. Who we are in God, who we are in Christ Jesus, and embracing that identity will cause us to draw a higher level of uh, attraction. Well, absolutely. It's, it's, the reality of it is that, that the Bible says that we must cease from our own works. But then it's kind of oxymoronic. There's a, there's, a cunt, there's a tension in the text. It says now, but labor, you told me not to labor. He says, but cease from your own labors. Now labor to enter into the rest. Now God, 
is in the Sabbath. Now, in the context of time and space,